Okay, so we're going to look at collisions. And not that it's any new particular idea, uh, but there's a lot of applications in here. So uh, that's why I'm putting all these in a new chapter. And usually textbooks do this in a new chapter, and I'm doing this for you. So hopefully this will help. But let's just talk about collisions. So I have here uh, two balls, A and B. And they're moving with some initial momentum. So P, A, 1. P, B, 1. And then they collide. And when they collide, they push on each other. So ball B pushes on ball A this way. But since forces are always an interaction between two things, then object A has pushed back on B with the same magnitude force but in the opposite direction. So I have these two forces. And then after the collision, the two balls are moving away because this force on A changes its momentum. So now I have PA2 and I have PB2. This is not anything new. This is a is a application of the momentum principle. So remember this, F net equals delta P over delta T. So this is the net force on an object is equal to the change in momentum. Oh, I guess I should say momentum is mass times velocity, and it's a vector. Okay, so if if I have ball A with momentum A1 and, and a net force on it, this force exerts on it for some time. I, that's the only force. This is in space. Then I can write for ball A, I can write this. F B on A so I'm using B on A, is a change of momentum. So it's going to be, let's just write this as delta P A. That's a change of momentum for A. And it, the interaction lasts for some time, ball A. Ball B, I can do the same thing. F A B equals delta P B over delta T. But, but, these are opposite of each other. F B A equals negative F A B. So that means that this has to be the negative of that. So let's put it, I, I, I planned poorly. So let's just put this right here. So that means delta P A delta T equals negative delta P B delta T because the forces are, this, are the equal and opposite. And what about the time? The times are the same. A can't be pushing on B any longer or shorter than B pushes on A. So these two times are the same, so they cancel. So now I have, um, now I can add this to the other side and I get delta P A plus delta P B equals zero, zero vector. This is important. And in fact, I could say if the change in A plus the change in B is zero, the change in momentum is zero, the total change in momentum. Or I could say the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. It's the same thing. Or I could say PA1 plus PA2 equals PA... Nope, 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 that's not what I want to say. I want to say PA1 plus PB1 equals PA2 plus PB2, right? Because if the initial, this is, all, this is the initial momentum, and the final is that. This is what we call conservation, conservation of momentum. When we say a quantity is conserved, that means before something happens, the momentum before, is equal to after something happens, right there. And another important thing to realize here is that momentum is a vector. So I can write this vector equation, or I could write this as PA1X plus PB1X equals PA1Y2 plus PB2X. I'm just getting out. I'm thinking ahead. 
this is the x component of that equation, and then I can do the same thing for y. I'm not gonna write it down because I'm gonna make a mistake. So that is conservation momentum. So let's write down some key things. When when would this not be true? When would this not be true? Well, what if there was some other force acting on A? So there's some uh, F2, I was calling it. In that case, over here, this would uh, have another force on it. But the thing is that these would not be the same. Okay, so if net force on the system equals zero vector, that's on the system, then momentum is conserved. Um, I can cheat, okay? I can, so if you have the system with a no net force of zero, then the momentum is conserved. But if it's super fast, a collision, a real collision, if I have these two things and they really collide, then the time interval between these is so small and the force between them is so large, I could ignore other forces like, like frictional forces and stuff like that. So that would work. Actually, that actually works pretty well. Okay, so I can do conservation momentum in the short time interval right before they collide to right after they collide. So super fast collisions, mostly true, approximately true. So what else was I gonna say? Oh, it, it's really two or three equations. Because you have the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. When you deal with things in the x in one direction, then the sign matters. So if I call this the positive x-axis, this would have negative momentum. This would have positive momentum. But we always want to consider the change, right? So so if it bounces back, it's going to go from negative to positive. So you just could be careful about that. Okay, I think I think that's enough about collisions. Uh, we probably just need to do some examples. So I'll do uh, collisions in one dimension first. I'll see you guys later.